Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Dredge. After finding the last relic, we're once again set on the quest for another. And now that our ship has been upgraded and we've made some new allies along the way, well, we've never had better means to continue exploring the world around us. But first, I think I'm going to help out an old acquaintance and bring some uh, scrap and metal to help her build her house. After all, there's something in it for us as well, so we might as well. Uh, and what we learned is that some of these creatures may be the product of our own insanity. We're not really sure about that at this point. Uh, including maybe the familiar ships we see on the horizon. But others are very, very real and recognized by others. Yep, you are still out there. Perhaps perhaps we really should remain in port until until dawn. Uh, you don't want to get anywhere close to these true shallows. Yeah, I'm actually still playing this uh, from the same sitting because this is a very addicting game. I really, really enjoy the gameplay. The lighthouse keeper is waiting for you on the dock, looking displeased. I saw you sailing out towards the horizon, crossing that deep expanse. Do you really think that's wise? It was fine. Maybe this time, you need to be more careful. Even you, with all your experience, cannot truly know the ocean. Nobody can. Abruptly, she walks away. Her eyes scan the water as she walks along the dock. I mean, yeah. Imagine telling a sailor from the Age of Exploration that we'll have developed vehicles that can take us beneath the waves even observed as deep down as, like, thousands and thousands of meters. And we still don't know even a small fraction of what's down there. Alright, well, that unfriendly ship that likes to hang out around here seems to only be an issue at night. So let's just uh, get ourselves up here and see about building that house. Everything should be okay now, and we can even get some pretty expensive catches on the way back. Our coffers are actually quite full, which uh, is good, because we're going to need that money to upgrade our space. We definitely need better tools and more storage. And not to mention, the more storage we have, the less likely it is that attacks damage our vital equipment. Alright, uh, let's get some of this stuff in there. And I think this is going to be quite a mutually beneficial thing. You should let the builder know. Good call. Ooh. Ooh, we found the Holy Grail! Oh no, it's just the Goblet of Fire. Dang it. And a thin veneer of gold leaf. Uh, we'll also want to get more and more of these resources as we go, because I've kind of been neglecting upgrading, like, the vessel. Uh, but it's definitely something we'll want to do. Ooh, and a research part. Always useful. Every once in a while, as I'm steaming through the sea, I'll just hear some great roar from somewhere out there. It's really terrifying. I look around, which isn't easy to do, and just find either nothing or... Well, actually, it's always nothing. Hey there, Builder. You've done it? Well, no sense in wasting time. Let's get moving. Alright, I actually don't have time at the moment, or... Yeah, I can't move these to cargo from here. Now, I have no idea which of these is more important, or if we'll be able to arrange where our upgrade slots actually go. Uh, but we could definitely use that new hull, allow us to survive more easily. Uh, so let's move some of this stuff in while we're here. And purchase that upgrade. We got plenty of money, and we get two more engine slots. Now, what about you? We actually haven't had the opportunity to even see nets yet in storage or in the shops, so let's do that. 125. And if we do you, uh, do we actually have the means? Uh, we do. 
Okay, just barely. Okay. All that dredging that's been fairly useless up until now is finally paying off. There we go. And what about the new hull? That's going to take quite a lot, but uh, we'll do that later. In the meantime, let's have a look at what our ship actually looks like now. Uh, it doesn't seem like we could. That's now in an engine slot. Uh, we can maybe do something with an additional rod, but not with anything else. Alright, you come with me. Good riddance to you, Greater Marrow. I'm onward bound. We you know we're leaving at night, right? There's a good chance that we actually die doing this. It, you know what? Don't worry about it. I just want someone around as a witness. Oh, we're off to a great start. Now let's go. <laughs> Whenever I'm making my way, like, a short distance away from port, I always feel like Spongebob taking out the trash on the night shift. Just run, 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 and even though it's unlikely that we encounter any, uh, dangers... Oh, there's always the possibility. I really want to get one of you. Couldn't before, and I can't now either. Dang it. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> Just had to lay you down right next to the shark, that's fine. Oh yeah, don't worry about those things. Those are just out here sometimes. Please tell other people you saw them. Yes. Yes, this'll do. Thank you, fella. Give me a short while to get things built here. You're welcome back anytime. She reaches into her toolbox and pulls out a handful of components. Take these. Always good to have on hand. Yes, they are! Oh, thank you so much! Ah, oh, beautiful. And we now have a new place to rest, research, and repair. Or maybe repair, I don't know yet. Uh, let's have a look at some of these other things we can get. Uh, we could get ourselves a twin jet engine drive. Oh, that would be really great. So much faster, too. Uh, but what else can we get? We can get better crab pots. Maybe those would be something good. Or we can get trawl nets. I'm going to hold on to these upgrade parts until we know what it is we're going to need next. Because I don't want to end up in another situation where I'm looking for stuff I can't use. Usually placid during the day, these predators enter a frenzied hunt when the sun sets. Well, more importantly, we can sell them for a pretty penny. We've still got some unfinished business to attend to, but... I think we're going to grab ourselves some blue mackerel. Ooh. That's not a blue mackerel. Many-eyed mackerel. I was just trying to find some food for death. I mean, he's stranded on an island. He seems like he could use it. He's to put on a few pounds as well. Gill plates dotted with eyeballs. Superfluous, but scanning frantically. All eyes see right through you. Okay, let's see what the fishmonger has to say about that. Yeah, you will pay good money for this. <laughs> Actually, this might be the first prized aberration we found. It's about five or six times what a normal uh, blue mackerel is worth. But yeah, I actually really, really like the idea of these aberrations. Because it means you find these weird things, not just randomly, but when you're fishing for something else. Which really adds to that Lovecraftian horror of trying to do some mundane task and discovering something insane in the process. Now we will have to head over to the dusty pontoon. I think we'll stop over at the cliffs and then move our way back over to the, uh, where's our next objective? The Stellar Basin. And we'll move between these two things, although... It maybe doesn't actually save us that much. They're actually pretty far apart. Well, let's get a move on before this thing spoils. Actually, wait, no. The Dusty Pontoon, that was... That was the Merchant. No, you're right here. We've got to remember that all these little islands that aren't necessarily on the maps... Well, they're worth looking at, too. We've had a lot of luck with them. Yep, I've got your... What happened to the Blue Mackerel? Grab another one of these for death. It seems like we're going to be getting new powers for each of those, which is really exciting, but 
I don't know, do those just serve as like the main story of the game or, or are they just getting us started? I mean, they're a good way to keep us moving, but honestly, what motivates me, what motivates me is the discovery of the creatures below. All right, all right, here's your order. With expert precision, they plunge their hands through the gullet of the fish and tear out the heart. They stuff it into their mouth unceremoniously. More still, empty. They point to another shape on a second scroll. This one looks like a tiger mackerel. Okay, so fulfilling your hunger will take us back to the Gale Isle. I mean, uh, Gale Cliffs. Oh, hello, you look like something new. Like a swordfish or something. And we do have the means to get you, but you're a slippery one. Eh. Come on, there we go. Sailfish. Oh, but you're quite huge. We actually... There's no place we can put you. Uh, I guess we can just barely manage it if we get rid of the shark. Alright, let's head over and see what we'll get for you. Uh, also, what is your description? Impossibly quick, but the bill and sale don't sell for much. I'm starting to wonder if there won't maybe be, like, purposes for some of these creatures beyond just selling them for money. But then again, it's told us that things won't sell well before, and then, well, they did. But maybe not worth the storage space? Alright. What'll you give us? 101 for the Bronze Whaler. And 102 for the Sailfish. Not really worth it for the inventory space. But we got $2,000 even after all those upgrades. Ah, oh, we can grab some Tiger Mackerel right here. And I'm starting to think that, like, while I'm around, maybe I should also uh, purchase some explosives before I head over to the new place. Alright, got your stuff. Alright, here you go. Again, they rip into the flesh of the fish, drawing out its heart. It's consumed as quickly as the first. Almost fulfilled. Alright, well, if that's the case, if you only have the three scrolls, then uh, maybe, we, maybe we deal with this detour. You want a snake mackerel. I don't know if we've encountered that just yet. Now, we've got a lot of ground to cover, and time passes very quickly. So we'll want to cut east, like immediately, or rather west, and keep going. I'm not used to not even being able to see what I'm looking for from where I am. But I believe that coast in the fog is what we're after. So let's make due haste and get going. Of course, we'll want to be searching for any exotic fish we can find whilst out on the open ocean. What are you? Uh, let's actually make more use of this, uh, sailfish. Yep, as we established, you guys are not particularly worth it unless there's nothing else going on. And anytime we come into a new place, we have to imagine there will be something else going on. Huh. Now these- whoa! Oh, is that a humpback whale? That is absolutely gorgeous! Oh, this game- it, it really captures the wonder of the ocean. And I like that it hasn't neglected that. It, it could have gone the Lovecraft route and really, like, made it so that it's all horror all the time. And that would have been atmospheric still, maybe, but it would have really lost something in doing so. Now these look like much more tropical shores, actually. A collection of cases have washed up against the shore. Some have already split open and lost their contents to the waves. But we did find the photography equipment. A case containing professional-looking camera equipment. Oh, well, I think we know who that belongs to. We never did actually link up with the photographer. Let's have a look at our map to see where it is we're actually going. 
Well, these islands are actually off to the side of the Stellar Basin, so we need to move into the middle of that ring. Actually, does that suggest maybe some kind of, like, volcanic activity? I mean, I know I saw a category of rods that said, like, something to do with, like, volcanic and heat. Oh, and there's a wreck here we can dredge. Uh, but we don't really have need of scrap metal right now. We want to keep our cargo hold relatively clear. Uh, and I really don't like the idea of being out here after dark before we've even found a port. Uh, September 14th. Uh, I'm hanging on every word of this story. I've not written in a few days. I've been afflicted with some strange chill which conspires to fog my brain. I can't seem to keep warm no matter what I do. The ink has run some lines here and they're illegible. While most of what they hauled up was junk, they eventually came up with a large wooden casket. A hush came over the crew at such a tantalizing discovery. I remember the next moments with excruciating clarity. He pried it open easily. The buckling boards cracked and groaned with relief as they splintered apart. Crimson cloth spilled out onto the deck. The crashing waves rose to fill my ears. I hear them still. He stared down into the open casket, then turned to me. In his eyes, I saw the void. The page has been torn off here. What was it that they found? And more importantly, am I going to be its next discoverer? Equal parts, uh, equal parts tantalizing and terrifying. Oh, but look! Uh, a new abyssal fishing type. Those look like anglerfish, and, uh, maybe I can get a little bit of sweet revenge on that ghost ship that's been stalking me. Oh, that looks like some kind of castle or something. Uh, maybe there'll be some place to dock there? I can only hope. That's another cool thing this game captures, is the distances involved relative to your speed. It makes it so that port, when you're venturing to a new area, can be so, so valuable. You'll take your chances with just about any hint of civilization. Ooh, that's actually coastal. We can grab this stuff. Oh, are these the glow squid from Minecraft's caves? Well, I definitely want what you've got. Firefly squid. This tiny, sparkling squid spends most of its time in the deep ocean, rising to the surface as it nears the end of its life. Uh, well, all that means to me is that we've got a narrow window to sell you. Oh, look! There's all kinds of bioluminescent creatures all over the place, and it's considered shallow, so we can fish them. Oh, the real fishing here is to be done at night. March 6th and 7th. We're engaged to be married. He sailed us out to the very center of Stellar Basin to see the lights. We talked for hours. Something we've not done in such a long time. Waiting and hoping. Sometime past midnight. We were, glo we were growing delirious and hysterical from the lack of sleep. Maybe you were glowing at this rate. The aurora shimmered into the skies above. When I turned to see his reaction, he was already down on one knee. I can't even remember what he said, or what I said, but I know that I said yes. The ring is beautiful, with a span of jewels going right the way around. I cannot take my eyes off it. P.S. I wasn't sure whether to write this under yesterday's date or today's, given that it occurred at the conjunction of days. But I feel that the news is significant enough to war warrant spanning multiple entries. <laughs> significant, huh? Well, that's one way of putting a marriage proposal. I want to say congratulations. I'm almost happy for them, but I know that this can't end well. Now, who inhabits this old fort? I can see the guns up on the, uh, up on the battlements. Huh, a lone researcher. Oh, um, hello. I wasn't expecting visitors. Who are you? A fisherman. 
Ah, uh, yes, I thought you had the look. But a fisherman all the way out here? Strange. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you all the same. I've not seen another soul in months. In fact, I could do with your help if you had the time, so does that mean that you don't have a place for me to sell these squid? Alright, well, what do you need help with? I need help collecting samples to study. I was originally posted at the research outpost on the interior of the basin. But it was attacked. Attacked by who? A large creature emerged from the depths and destroyed the outposts. Now it rests in the center of the basin. Oh, great, another island, another monster. It fl I fled here, and I've been making do as best I can, but I had to leave most of my equipment behind. So now my research has come to a halt. Take a look at the list of specimens I need, please. And drop them off here. Ah, oh, well, actually, I think I do have one. Uh, you might need to experiment with different fishing strategies to collect all of them. Yeah, we'll need to we'll need to upgrade. You know, I have to say the progression in this game is really well done, pushing you along so that you're kind of forced to upgrade what you need to accomplish the task at hand. It's not so open that it becomes overwhelming, which it very easily could have been if it weren't for the level of guidance that it gives you. And it's all discoveries all the way, so you don't get bored. You don't feel like you're being railroaded through a tutorial the entire time. Anyway, here you go. Is there anything else? What sort of creature attacked you? Well, I got the sense that it was attacking the research outpost itself, rather than me specifically. Uh, maybe something that was being done there was drawing it? I suspect it was disturbed by some of my moder monitoring equipment. There were dozens of machines running there, all powered by a noisy generator. It was huge. Larger than any other marine species I've studied. It attacked with tentacles. So I guess it's some sort of octopus or squid. Or an, anem an anemone. We've encountered something with tentacles before. One of my research vessels was moored around the back of the station, so I managed to slip away in that while it was tearing apart the front. There was a lot of valuable data and equipment left there, but I'm not going back. I won't face it again. Have you noticed anything else unusual since you arrived? You know, besides the giant creature emerging from the depths and destroying your base. Now that you mention it, i have been so preoccupied with the attack and having to rebuild here, I had almost forgotten. I found these letters. From my sister. She'd sent them to me while I was studying before... Before she... The researcher is quiet for a moment and stares off to the side. Anyway. I kept finding them amongst my papers. I don't remember packing them, but I must have. I started finding them more frequently. They turned up in my collection nets, in my sampling tubes. They were letters I'd never seen before, but they were in her writing. They were in her name. Someone's trying to contact you. They were saying things. Talking about things that happened after she died. I can't explain it. Okay, so something is going on here. Either she's not dead, she's trying to contact you from beyond the grave in some way, or something's trying to imitate her. I keep thinking about that anglerfish creature. Tell me about yourself. Uh, okay, but I don't think there's much to say. I studied biological sciences at Ironhaven College, and it was a struggle. There were no other female students in the department that year. Or the year before. Or the year before that. It's hard not to feel like an outsider in an environment like that, you know? And you probably don't. When I graduated, I managed to land a job at the Northern Biological Research Society, and then... Well, I was posted here. By myself. I thought I would relish the peace and quiet. But I miss having company. I've always had someone, or at least a pet. Out here, it's just machines. 
So it looks like we're looking for some species of jellyfish, aurora jellyfish, and a glowing octopus. Uh, well, the jellyfish need to be caught with a net, which we don't have yet. But maybe we can catch the octopus? Well, let's head out there at night. Seems like everything here is nocturnal. Well, look at those lights in the sky. And the moon on the horizon, and yet still, we can see that light in the distance. Alright, well, let's head out and see what we can and can't find, although... Uh, something still shimmers in the depths. What are these things over here? Oh, so much bioluminescent life out here! Absolutely fascinating. I can see why a marine biologist would want to study this stuff. Can we actually fish here? Ah, here we are. Here's those octopi. Okay, nope, we want the big catch. There we go! A big old glowing octopus. This remarkable octopus emits light from its suckers in a swirling, twinkling pattern. Ah, fascinating creatures. I hope we're not going to hurt them. I'm not going to bother getting any more for now until I know where I can sell them. Uh, only because, well, I wouldn't want them to go to waste. Even though the animals are infinite as far as I can tell, I still feel a sense of duty to preserve. Wouldn't want any of these things going extinct, especially for how amazing they are. I've got another one, but I don't yet have the means to catch the jellyfish. Now, this is interesting. It says discovered 32 out of 138. There's so many more creatures to see. Oh, this game is amazing. And we've yet to see what unique threats lurk in this region, but uh, besides that giant tentacled creature itself, we're now seeing another one of those plumes. Do you do anything? No, you don't seem to be catchable. We need to figure out how to use our trawling net. Oh, don't want to accidentally teleport. That's the last thing I want to do. I just realized those those aren't like bioluminescent creatures. Well, it's bioluminescent creature. You're the tentacled beast. Like the drop off at the center of this basin. It is the opening that you're contained within. This whole thing might as well be a deep mouth. Uh, okay, well... Oh, when I ride over you, you kind of pop and sink to the bottom. I feel pretty bad about that one. doesn't appear to have damaged us. But, yeah, we need to look around and see what else we can gather here, but... Uh, the shallows are one thing, but going into the deep is yet another. We definitely can't enter the center of this. Something appears to be blowing water, or maybe smoke from over... Nope, you're a bad thing, you're a bad thing. To the dock, to the dock, to the dock! Alright, so there are other things in the dark here as well. Uh, well, this is what remains of the research outpost. An old destroyed boat part of it as well. An old generator sputters and ticks over. The laboratory is in ruins, with equipment and research papers strewn about the place. Where do I want to look? Let's open the cupboards. Check the cupboards and find a research part. Excellent. What about the equipment table? There are some prototype parts on the table, but you can't see any use for them right now. Okay, she'll probably be able to make some use. On the other side of the table, you find a hastily scrawled note. It reads, Not safe. Expect retaliation immediately. Evacuating to fort. Now listen to the soundtrack. I, I really like how every area sort of has its own theme as well as story. This one's sounding so lonely and full of loss. A lost sister, a lost outpost and I guess a sort of disillusionment, wanting to study the sea and the sea fighting back. 
Let's look around the floor. There are cracks in the base of the structure that grow to large gashes as you follow them along to the walls. Something extremely large and powerful created these holes. You slowly reach your arm into one like some kind of idiot and find another research part like some kind of genius. You pluck an item from a gouge in the floor. Well, I suppose we've salvaged all we can for now. Maybe we can repair the generator at some point? I mean, I'd really hate to see her lose her enthusiasm for the sea. But we've got to look around. There's got to be... Ah, uh, yes. There may, if we follow the outer rim, be someplace else we can dock. We've just got to be extremely careful about doing so. Oh, a whole village! Well, I guess she's not entirely alone in this region, and it would seem there's some more things for us to catch here. Ooh, a coral grouper. Cool looking thing. Uh, we can stick you right neatly in there. Commonly found hovering above offshore reefs, this large fish ambushes smaller fish that dare leave the protection of the coral. There's got to be some place we can trade around here, right? Oh, but then again, this place too looks to be in ruins. We can probably use explosives here. Ah, so I was right to bring that stuff. I can access my storage from the research outpost, or rather the fort. The stone hums quietly, sending ripples through the air around it. Faint shapes dance upon its surface, van uh, vanishing before your eyes. Okay, I think this dialogue is the same every time. Does not respond to our touch, though. Maybe we'll have some way to interact with that later. Okay, so I think the place we're actually meant to be heading is going to be those lights over there. Oh, maybe she really is alone, because that actually looks very much like the Traveling Merchant. Who doesn't actually travel so much as uh, teleports off screen to wherever I am, which is actually the ideal configuration. Ah, uh, is it you, really? Ah, nice to see a familiar face. What do you think of Stellar Basin? Ah, oh, what beautiful crystalline water. It's a shame I can't take my boat too much further in. I've run aground on the coral a few times. Mm. Have you checked out the abandoned resort to the east? Ah, oh, it was a resort. It's pretty impressive. Probably some decent salvage to be had there. It's kind of amazing how quickly it all falls to ruin without people around to maintain it. In a few years, these pontoons will probably go the same way. Well, not if you keep on them. That's just the way of things, I guess. Is there anything you want to talk about? Yeah, I've got some stuff to sell you. Oh, uh, now you will not actually fetch that great of a price. Now, here's what I'm thinking. In the previous part, I had speculated that maybe if we have more than one engine, only the one with the damaged hull segment will be out of action. We do have the teleport option now, so it's not really worth investing all our research parts in. But this thing, while slow, even slower than our original engine, well, it could potentially keep us in the fight and is unlikely to be knocked out. And it would have made a world of difference before. But I think for now, I'm going to invest in a net. So let's grab this. Uh, never really needed it before, so it's weird that there's such an early tech tree for it. Uh, and it seems much like the crab pots, it's actually uh, got a certain amount of time on it. Hmm. And they also have certain, like, locations they can be used in. So let's grab the improved trawl net, install it there, hope it works. Thank you. And now we unlock the ability trawl net passively catches fish over time. And presumably we need to be in the right spot. Now night may be falling, but that's actually kind of what we want. And I think as long as we stay on the periphery, we should be okay. Uh, so let's get over to where that is and see what we can do. Now I also wonder how it's going to place these things into my inventory. 
and it's catch things as you move, but need repairing ever so often. Okay. I actually really like that there's, like, different mechanics for different types of catch. Uh, and these jellyfish could be the death of me, luring me with their lights to the edge of the abyss. Alright, uh, trawler net. You can lower it with right click. And away we go. Caught you. And caught you, but did we really? Uh, there's a great rumble emanating from below. This thing is hungry and it'll be coming out to feed. Or at least I hope not. I hope it stays where it is and is a more passive predator, like some kind of trap hole spider. Trap door spider? Is that what they're called? Anyway, uh, maybe we can try dredging here. I mean, it says squid, but maybe it'll be worth it just to leave our trawl net out and see what happens. Uh, and we've got a UI here as well, telling me what we can get. Will it give us a message when we catch something? Well, we don't need your sass. Oh, we caught something. Uh, actually, a couple of things. Hang on, let's move away from the horrible places. Three. Yeah, how do I how do I check? Cabin encyclopedia. Ah, we are catching jellyfish. I just can't see them in the hold. So I guess the net counts as. Oh, net is its own thing. Okay, I hadn't even realized that. Oh, and they are quite big illuminating the netherworld with a dull glow with few predators. This species is spreading rapidly. Jellyfish, another of those creatures that I find so fascinating, they just don't seem like anything else that exists on Earth. I remember studying them in uh, seventh grade. Ah, and we caught a red snapper. Uh, what are those? But yeah, I remember studying, like, the mechanism that actually causes their nematocysts to trigger. Uh, I just found them so cool. Uh, but let's uh, head into port where nothing can hurt us. Remember, no bad things, no natural disasters ever happen to ports. Alright, so let's sell some of our stuff. Uh, red snapper, a very popular eating fish. Often found hanging around rocky coastal waters and reefs. Not worth much, but you'll take it. And these jellyfish, not worth very much either, but again, you'll take them. Alright, let's get back to the researcher so we can do our quest. Oh, is there some other type of shark here? That looks like a hammerhead. Uh, maybe we should move this over here. Uh, but I don't have the... I don't have the hydraulic lift, so I can't pull you up. Alright, well, that can be rectified. At least we know where you are now. All right, this should be the last of the specimens she needs to continue her research. Oh, imagine having this whole castle to yourself. This is just an entire game full of things I want. Things I want in terms of lifestyle, things I want in terms of property. Probably not things I want in terms of eating. I'm not a big seafood guy. Uh, hello again. All right, uh, in our net should be the final specimen. Thank you. Yeah, it looks like you've caught all the surface specimens I need. But, ah, uh, yes. I do also need some from... deeper down. But that's going to be a problem. Why is that a problem? I developed a device to retrieve samples from the Abyssal Zone. This was over in the other research outpost before the attack. Is that maybe what triggered the attack, if those are the notes we saw on the table? I have an idea of how to keep the creature at bay long enough to collect these samples. But while I work on that, I need you to retrieve some prototype parts. Uh, I just came from there. Carefully. I suggest you go during the day. I wouldn't want to be out on the reef at night. Is there anything else? Oh, I think we're good. Oh, look, there's all kinds of, like, coral and such down below. 
It actually gives you quite a lot to look at in these clear waters, but, uh, well, of course, that comes at a trade-off. Although I'm certainly happy to be able to see it versus not. What are you guys? We should also be remembering that since we're in a new area, anything we can see is useful. Ah, Barracuda. Ah, and you are long boys. This ferocious, this ferocious fish is capable of great bursts of speed and hunts by biting its prey clean in half. Uh, you know, with the strange nature of, uh, of these deep dwellers, I'm gonna have a hard time even telling when we started encountering aberrations. And they fetch in the 30s, which is not bad at all. I should probably move this to storage, since it's clear we're not gonna be finding that photographer here. It's actually been so long since she was mentioned that I have no idea where she actually is. Uh, and we get uh, Art of the Silver Tongue, uh, which buys us, uh, where's that? 10% increased sell prices and 10% reduced buy prices. Yeah, not that I really need the money. I'm enjoying the fishing so much, I think I have more than I'm supposed to at this point. Uh, absolutely beautiful space here. Bioluminescent life is so cool to me. And I like that it also furthers that spirit of adventure by having each of these places be so distinct in its ecological, like, systems. Um, oh, if we can get some research parts, that would be insane. These are, like, one of the biggest things in the game for me right now. Come on. Yes. All right. Always want more. But we've also got this to deal with right here. And it's a little different at night, seeing this dark, abandoned base appear on the edge of our lights. Most ports... I mean, they are ports in the storm. They have lights on that guide us to them. With this, it's just the opposite. Alright, let's look on the table again. And we find the prototype parts. We stow the prototype parts on board. Now, see, here's the thing. I actually don't know what happens if we try to sail out there. I mean, we know we'll be attacked, but is it worth baiting it just to see what happens? Oh, another one of these things. The stone trembles before you. A deep vision enters your mind. A spore floats in the water, adrift in the current. Fish feast in a frenzy above, devouring its kin. The spore lands in the thick silt of the seafloor. Its roots stretch down into the seabed, growing, extending towards what lies beneath. Perhaps a warning of something that resides down in the deep? Maybe it even became that creature. Maybe it's not an octopus at all. I mean, she did seem to express some level of doubt. She did say, maybe an anemone? Excellent. Let me assemble a device for you. This should allow you to catch specimens from much greater depths. It's a little slow, but you may be able to make some improvements. A sampling device. A custom design from the researcher. It's inefficient, but should me allow should allow me to harvest some samples from the depths. Will this allow me to yeah, abyssal catches? All right. Well, I'm afraid we'll have to uh, store this for now, uh, making us unable to get other catches. But we can start uh, sampling some of these creatures. I've developed a repulsion machine that produces a bright light and emits a high-pitched noise. It should deter the creature from attacking. Or enrage it, I'm not sure. Oh well, we'll... no time like the present to find out. Connect it to the research outpost's generator. You'll have to return it and... or sorry, you'll have to return and re-engage it every few hours. But other than that, it's completely automated. A complicated looking piece of equipment with lights and a loudspeaker. You're not quite sure which way it should be facing. Needs to be attached to a generator. This can go nothing but well. Alright, and we have a new list of specimens. Remember, 
You'll want to install and activate the machine before attempting to collect these. You might also need to improve the equipment I gave you to catch some of these. Is there anything else? Well... Definitely very present here. Necessity is the mother of invention. And let's have a look if we can't maybe improve some of this right away. And not really. We could get these bottomless lines, but not very useful until we've uh, until we've upgraded the ship itself. I know we were warned, but what happens if we do try to do this? Just what happens? Loose jaw. Okay, so we came out of it okay that time. With red searchlights below its eyes, this predator hunts with needle-like teeth. And its stomach can expand to hold prey larger than itself. Okay, so maybe, maybe what that machine needs is... It's not just about grabbing stuff from the abyss. It's about grabbing stuff from the abyss. Things that uh, we need to go out over that gaping jaw to grab. Now we're also looking for an anglerfish, a snailfish, and a giant amphipod. Now that looks like it'll probably need to be caught, like... Mm, it's a different place. This only does abyssal, so how do we... Yeah, we'll definitely need to upgrade our equipment for sure. So we might as well use the research part on this. Don't spend the rest on this, although... This fathomless winch would actually be placeable within our current setup. Okay, yeah, I actually think it makes a lot of sense to grab that, and it's much faster than what we're using now. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Maybe a mistake. Maybe, maybe, uh, well... Let's catch a couple more of these guys to see what they sell for. Ooh, we can get a prized one. There we go. Ah, uh, and it's an aberration. Perished loose jaw. A few ragged scraps of skin hang like cobwebs from its fins. Its exposed muscles are riddled with small white worms. Some of these things seem almost like undead. But it's fascinating because they still live. Oh, it's almost like... It's almost like encountering, like, sickly creatures in the wild. It's so disturbing. Huh. I wonder how she would have felt if we had given her an aberration for this study. I just kind of want to see what they sell for, to be honest. Not quite brave enough to see how they taste. Although, from the look of them, they might want to taste me. Have I got some stuff for you. 88. These guys aren't worth all that much, but uh, I guess it's good to have them. Now, if we uninstall and store this thing, we should be able to head over to the shipyard and buy ourselves that new fathomless winch. Oh, that'll give us all kinds of new stuff and also condense uh, the equipment we need to have. So let's put that in. It wasn't cheap, but we've got the money. You know, look at the way that appears in the fog. It's just so unbelievably eerie having our lights be the one to illuminate civilization rather than, well, the lights of civilization guiding us in. We still got to be very careful doing this. And our relic is certainly going to be right at the center here. Is this what I was looking for? Yes, I believe it is. Now, if we head to the generator, we can take this here repulsion machine. I hope I figured out which way it's supposed to face. Oh, and we even find another research part. Yeah, we're going to activate that machine. It hums and whirs to life. A few seconds later, a bright light shoots from the top and an alarm begins blaring. The researcher said this should keep the creature at bay. For a time, at least. Um, I would really like to know how long. Okay, uh, out there, out there, out there. Now, what can we find? Oh, 
so nervous about doing this, but we don't have a choice. Uh, that's dredging stuff. That's dredging stuff. Uh, what happens if we're caught out here at the wrong time? Uh, you're one of the specimens we needed. Grab you, and stick you there, okay. Only need one. Only need one of each. Your one as well. There we go, and we've got a snailfish. A nice one, too. But what about the anglers? I think we saw some of those on the way in, did we not? But we weren't able to catch them. Oh. Maybe we've got to find those more towards the uh, shallower areas. Maybe Hadal or whatever it's called. Maybe that's just this great abyss right here. While we're at it, do we have room to grab you guys? Yep, yep, yep. Ah, Hammerhead Shark. We don't really have the room, which I kind of expected. But anyway, let's inspect our catch. A giant amphipod. After spending years scavenging fallen carcass on the ocean floor, this, crust this crustacean has grown extremely large. And snailfish. Adapted to suit the high-pressure environment of the deep, this fish begins to implode if it's dragged to the surface. And the hammerhead, a large shark species with an iconic silhouette. These animals have incredibly good eyesight for hunting. We are now at three out of four, and very, very close to being able to fulfill your needs. Now, I think we're going to hang around until nightfall, but I'm really kind of confused about how we're meant to deal with this. I mean, it seems like that thing is probably still going, but for how long? I wonder if there's not maybe some way we can check? I'm tempted to go back out there and try to grab some more stuff for sale, see how much they go for, but I don't know. I mean, I know we can check the encyclopedia, but, you know... I like to make the money. The thing is, I also have no idea if these things... And it stopped! And it stopped! And it stopped! And it stopped! Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going! And it re-emerges. Okay, so it's a good length of time. Enough to go out there and do it. Yeah, but certainly not enough for comfort. Uh, and there are some anglers. Right on time. I really hope those grumbles don't mean that you can come for... Oh, yeah, you will, you will, you will, you will. Uh, oh, no, I'm gonna hit the rocks, I'm gonna hit the rocks. Oh, I wasn't even paying attention. It's just I saw in the deep that tentacle snaking its way up through here. Uh, so you can get me there. That's the roar that I've been hearing. Oh, I was in danger the entire time, and I didn't even realize it? Okay. Let's, uh, let's get this thing going. Yep, activate it. And I'm going to take some more fish for my trouble. Now, anglerfish. Getting you feels like sweet revenge after what that boat thing put me through. You and you and you. There we go. Ah, oh, you are one ugly thing. Dangling a bright lure in front of its open mouth. This deep sea predator preys on the curious. Well, shouldn't have taken the bait. Now the hunter becomes the hunted. Now it becomes the hunter of the hunted. Now, can we maybe get one of these other things while we're out here? We could also potentially dredge ourselves up an artifact. Okay, we'll, we'll save that for tomorrow. Let's just grab ourselves a couple more of these things, because I keep accidentally selling quest fish. And we'll get back there and have it done. Uh, and uh, it's kind of a good thing I did, because now we get... Jesus Christ, look at that thing. It's a freaking xenomorph. The deep faces its own consequences of creation. In the darkness, brutality becomes the ultimate filter. 
Well, that's a bit deeper than just a description. I actually, it's really weird how the aberration catch noise is actually like almost a jump scare. It's not loud, it's not sudden, it's just not what you were expecting. It, it throws you off, and then by the time you realize what you just heard, you're face to face with whatever it is you pulled up. Alright, well, we've got everything she needs. What actually does happen if we give you that? I don't want to. I want to see what it sells for. There we go. I have good news and bad news. Which do you want to hear first? Tell me the good news so that the bad news won't seem so bad. The good news is that I've honed in on what's causing the abnormalities in the ecosystem. The bad news is that the samples you retrieved from the basin have dangerously high counts of cellular mutations. Do they? Do they? Because I've noticed. This all points to one thing. That thing in the basement is harmful to life at a cellular level. It damages everything around it, whether passively or with intent. I need to write a report on my findings. Sorry, our findings. Immediately. Maybe now they'll take me seriously. Oh, how rude of me. You've done all this for me, and I've not got much to say thank you with. Uh, you should have this. A plan for the future added to Cabin. She sheepishly hands a book to me. This is something I wrote during my studies. I think it'll be useful to you. Thanks again for your help. I'd recommend that you avoid that area. It doesn't seem to be safe near the basin. Well, I've still got something to do. It's kind of interesting how it's not like a typical adventure game like, you know, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours story. The subjects of the sort of regional quests don't actually even know that they're helping me. It's just that at some point in the middle of helping them, we gain the ability to get the collector's items. In this case, we could have gotten that stuff even before finishing her research project. Plan for the future. Let's start it. You know, I've just been treating those as like an environmental hazard. But just think of that from like a Lovecraftian perspective. You're out on the sea at night and spot a light in the distance. A ship moving incredibly fast through the night. Fire burning from its smokestack because they're just going as fast as they can possibly go. And then when you catch up with them, you finally ask them, What is it that you're running from? And they say, The whispers out on the sea. Oh, this game is so creepy if you think about it. Sometimes in a game, you gotta stop thinking about it as mechanics and start thinking about what it would actually be like to experience some of these things. I mean, I'm still rattled from how long it took me to realize what was going on at the center here. I think it's my poor sanity that causes you to come after me, because you appear everywhere. So maybe I should get some rest. You're also the one that disappears near buoys. Let's try blasting our way into here to see what it gets us. It does look like there's something to dredge. And I think it's uh, been pretty clearly shown that it's worth it to keep a stock of explosives around at all times. Uh, this, I think, is some of that uh, some of that refined metal that we had before. Haven't figured out a use for it yet, but it'll surely be worth a lot once we can figure that out. Now, unfortunately, when it's not at night, we actually can't see that uh, can't see that glow. But I've got to imagine it's mostly going to be the stuff that's uh, furthest out in the center. We should be pretty nearby it. Ah, uh, that right there has got to be it. Uh, just think of how deep we're sending this line. But it's got to be done.
And we found the relic. A jewel-encrusted band. A golden band, large enough to fit around a child's waist. All manner of gemstones are affixed to it, seemingly at random. Well, let's see what other materials we can grab as well, because before this episode is over, I really want to upgrade the hull of the ship. Ah, a sextant. A surprisingly intact navigation tool. Its complex mechanisms have seized up, but could still be valuable to the right dealer. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. Actually, we haven't tried using our foghorn. Hear a foghorn echo. And that came just from, like, off there somewhere. Huh, I wouldn't have even thought that was significant if Steam Achievements didn't call my attention to that. Interesting. Well, we found a lot today. You guys actually sell for a decent amount, considering you're basically shrimp. But we've got a lot to throw into storage as well. Now look, I am recording this well in advance, so at this time, it's still a week until even the first episode comes out. However, I know a lot of you are probably yelling at me, Just drop some crab cages! Come on, you're missing out on discovering so many species! Look, I know. I know, it's just that it's a long-term thing, and I'm always focused on these short-term goals. But pretty soon, now that I have a ton of money, I'm going to end up uh, doing what I can in that regard. I'll probably drop a bunch of them in different locations and then just come back to them, like, way later. Tell you what, let's buy ourselves a nice hearty crab pot, and then use that, leave a couple of these things here, and go. It doesn't really seem to... Yeah, we actually don't want to drop them at these depths. We want them pretty shallow. Alright, drop it right here. And we'll come back in about a day or so. Uh, I've actually just realized we've got some better lights available. 2100 lumens range 30 meters. Okay, so we're definitely going to be buying those. So let's sell these... And grab the Tungsten Floodlight. Definitely something we want. Now, also, uh, there's the manner of, uh, where can we, where do we buy, where do we buy crab pots? Would that be over at the fish market? Yeah. I've got the upgrade to give us the hardy crab pot, and these, I think, will be better for leaving things and then coming back. So let's just grab one of those, and we'll drop one of these down around here, uh, when we're getting ready to leave. The question that I have on my mind here is, do they actually, like, just break and we lose everything in them after that time? Like, do we have to get to them before that? Or will they just stop catching things and we can come back and grab whatever's in them? Uh, probably the shadows from palm trees, or at least it's supposed to be, but they kind of didn't really work out there and it looked like the tentacles of some large creature beneath the waves. Ah, uh, but those things don't exist. Now, what have we got here? Ooh, a blue crab, also known as swimmer crabs. These colorful crabs have two flattened legs that act as paddles, allowing them to swim very effectively. Okay, well, let's uh, pick up the cage, and why not drop a new one while we're at it? Now, actually, do we have a choice in that? Now, having recently docked, <laughs> I just know, and this is something I've been curious about the entire time, you want to see what happens if we piss this thing off. So let us see. Oh, we can see straight down your mouth. Oh, feed me, Seymour. Fly straight over you! Ow! You'll just attack and damage us. Whoa! And we're dashed to pieces in two hits. Load last save. Oh my god, that was terrifying. It's a good thing we ran into the researcher before we tried sailing over that. Uh, just consider that a what-if moment, a non-canon death. Only things left to do in this episode are to head back to Greater Marrow, or rather to the Collector's House, 
see what reward he offers me this time, what new magic powers he gives me in return, and perhaps, I suppose, upgrade our haul. It's starting to become very clear that there's certain fish we just can't catch. I mean, we can get the, the hammerhead sharks, but there's just no configuration I can put them in while still having all this stuff. So I'm hoping we can get that going, and, well, that'll give us a lot more wiggle room. Not to mention the opportunity to make more money while we're out here. Hello, what is that? That, I believe, is not an island we've seen before, but there's quite a large shipwreck right off of it. And all kinds of things moving just to the side of it. That looks like it's probably cloth, maybe some scrap. No, no valuables here. I think we need metal. I think that's what we're in the most need of right now. It's moments like this when you're dredging these shipwrecks. Unable to tell what it is that's around you, but no music, no creatures. And just the sounds of whatever creatures are chittering on the island itself. Makes you wonder how long this wreck has been sitting here silently. But already I'm hearing some very strange sounds out there. Are you gonna turn to me? Yes you are! If we sound our foghorn... That, you are totally undeterred by that. Okay, run, run, run. Oh. Uh, the best thing I think I can do is head for the Collector. Oh, what a great time to finish reading a good book from the Researcher. They're still coming up behind me. All right, come on, haste, any time. Oh, I, I love how it's such a mad dash for safety. There's just something about being able to feel the terror on a ship rapidly steaming through the night. I know so many people are going to be yelling, like, it's a boat, not a ship! I don't care. Um, okay, a ruined mansion. Oh, no, I have to, uh, I have to go into storage and get it, okay. You walk in and place the jewel-encrusted ring on a table by the collector. His eyes widen. We're certainly making excellent progress now. And I know what you're thinking. An item like this would fetch a fortune at any auction. But for us, its value transcends material wealth. Regardless, you are due a reward. He opens the crimson book, its spine cracking audibly. Selecting a page carefully, he begins to read aloud. The words sound muffled, as though he's speaking through a thick haze. Oh, banish. You hear a growling, crackling in your ears. Suddenly, your vision flares, and both of your ears pop. He closes the book. We must keep searching. I've been thinking more on where we might find another. I can imagine all manner of detritus swallowed by the silty muck of Twisted Strand's channels. It's worth investigating. I'll mark a location on your map where you can begin your search. The banishing words will provide you a temporary protection from... most things. If spoken swiftly enough, they can be used defensively. Choose your moment carefully. The more they are spoken, the more they are understood. Are there other powers you wish to know more about? So it seems that each of these powers has a drawback, but the last two, I mean, we've yet to find out what they are. We know that with haste we can blow out our engine, which is fairly straightforward, but eh, what will you do once you have all the relics? He ponders for a moment. It's surprising, isn't it? The attachments we hold towards simple objects? They're anything but simple. Seemingly mute articles can speak in different ways. If I showed you a childhood toy, you would be awash with forgotten memories. They hold the power to recall what was once lost. Anything else? Yeah, these are the conversations I'd expect to have with the inhabitant of this house. What do you know about the mayor of Little Narrow? 
Marrow, I mean. That stuttering old fool. Yes, I knew him. He'd join us on the water sometimes, but was more hindrance than help. He never seemed entirely with it. I can't imagine he spared too well since I last saw him. Anything else? Yeah, he seems jovial, but uh, certainly aware of the dangers out here. I'm going to sail slowly back to Little Marrow and hope something attacks me on the way. Uh, it's like I've just gotten new pepper spray. And I'm eager to get mugged so I can use it. Before we dock, let's have a look at where it is we're going in the next part. Twisted Strand. Uh, that certainly looks like some place where some long snake-like creature could slither around undetected. Uh, what did what did the researcher's uh, book do for us? Uh, where did that go? A plan for the future. 15% chance to not reduce fish stocks when catching a fish with a rod. Now, does that stack or does it place it at 15%? In any case, there's going to be some good eating. The lighthouse keeper approaches you on the dock, wearing a questioning expression. You must have been around most of the islands by now. Have you found what it is you're looking for? I'm not sure. Her face softens. Remember that you're in control. If you're having doubts, it's foolish to blindly persevere. You can always look for alternative paths. She turns from you, shaking her head and muttering. She heads back towards the lighthouse. She seems like someone who would know. We still have literally zero in the way of scrap metal, but... We do have our first use for refined metal. This is going to be an expensive upgrade. But I think it's worth our time to get it done. And get out there. Now, uh, something that I've actually been neglecting up until this point, uh, and sorry to not end it neatly with the collector, but I don't want it to end in the same place every time. What actually was our pursuit relating to the photographer? Where did the mayor say she went? Ah, uh, I can actually ask you about any of these places. Tell me about Twisted Strand, since that's where I'm going. Hmm. I don't think there's much to tell. It's just a tangled mass of trees, so it's forested. It's often blanketed in a thick fog, even during the day. You'd want some good lights and sense of direction if you're going to explore there. Also, uh, tell me a little bit about Stellar Basin. Do you know about that creature? Quite a popular tourist destination. There's a resort on the atoll built on top of a beautiful coral reef. I'm sure there's a wide variety of fish there. Maybe a fancy you're getting, getting your hooks into some of those? Uh, so you don't know about the creature. In fact, you don't even know that the resort is totally abandoned. Uh, the last fisherman? Uh, he was a very unreliable person. He'd go out at night, come back with no fish, and proceed to sleep all day. He was also a terrible captain. I mean, really terrible. Constantly running around on the reef aground even in broad daylight. The shipwright almost ran out of wood for repairs. No, he was no good. One evening he left and never came back. So long. Shan't be missed by us. Huh, I see you've got your house built. That's excellent. I'm just over here looking for some cloth because I've now got the metal. Uh, what have you got to say? Hey, thanks again for helping me move out here. I've managed to get myself set up now. I found this while I was unpacking. You should take it. And we got the Engineer's Companion. If you ever need to use the dock or store stuff here, be my guest. Oh, you're actually a great place for uh, storing our salvage. There you go, and there you go. Now, there is some stuff floating off here, so let's have a look. Here you are. And let's see what that ability does. You're welcome, Matthew. Which one was it? Banish. Can dispel most evils for a time. Goodbye! Get on out of here. Oh. 
And it's not just one shout, it actually acts as a protective shield. But I can't stop it, I can't turn it off. And back you come as soon as it's over. Alright. Well, as we know, you're not really affected by buoys. Of course, it's not really safe to be moving so close to shore this quickly in the dark. Thankfully, this light gives us a little bit of a heads up. Oh, I love this thing. But I think we made it okay. Uh, <laughs> it's strange how it emulates a foghorn, and yet we can feel the anger, the hunger on it. But we finally have the means to put all this away. Uh, so that's metal and metal. Come on. And cloth and... What happened? We had more cloth, didn't we? All right, right here. And we can build our first new hull. And there we go. Upgrades your vessel to a tier two hull and adds five new cargo spaces. It can sustain one additional impact. We can also add more cargo spaces, so we're going to want to start working on that as soon as possible. Now this is all well and good, and I have no idea how fast I'm supposed to be progressing. But it seems like I'm kind of rushing the story. Getting this tier 3 hull upgrade would be amazing. Adding 9 additional cargo spaces, and if we get the next one after that... Oh, if we rush that, we're going to have so much extra room to work with, especially after getting this. So that's 9... Four, so 13, fifth, uh, 17, in addition to what we got from here. So, huge, huge improvement. Things are looking a little bit more spacious already, but as excited as I am to keep playing, I, I almost feel like recording more right now, even after I already recorded the last part today. But whether I decide to keep going or not, uh, for you, it'll all be next time. Until then, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Oh, that's a good catch. And now we have plenty of places to put it.